Welcome to That's Good for Footy. You've really thrown me with that one. Hi, how are you? Yeah, nice to see you. Uh, good to see you all. Welcome along to That's Good For Footy and welcome along to the Springvale RSL for Melbourne Night. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you all. Um, I'm not going to muck around because we want to get the show straight underway. We've got a lot to get through tonight and I want to do it all with you and I want to do it all calmly and uh, in, in a respectful way, all right? Okay, yeah, stop laughing, Carly. All right, uh, welcome to That's Good Footy. This is the only live and interactive, family-friendly footy panel show. This is where the fans meet the players and the players meet the fans. The shows are for the passionate supporters. The shows are the way that they allow you to see the players in their own natural life. Okay, I'm ready, let's go, let's get stuck in. Melbourne show, July the 6th, 2023. Please welcome to the show, he's our first panellist. He was born on the 13th of April, 1994. He's played a total of 186 games and he's kicked 54 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2013. When he plays for the Melbourne Football Club, he wears a number seven on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Jack Viney. It's a grand old flag, it's a high-flying flag. It's the emblem for me and for you. It's the emblem of the team we love, the team of the red. Very nice, very nice, that's great. That's wonderful. You've heard that a lot this year, haven't you? Yeah, good. No, all right. Okay, let's not go there, Damo. Um, this is wonderful. Jack and I were just having a quick chat out the back. The last time I had Jack on the show, I don't know whether any of you were even around then, um, was 2015. Um, it, yeah, 2015, yeah. Long time ago. Well, you, you two were there. You two, you two helped, helped build the venue that we were hosting it in. It was fabulous. Um, but uh, it's been a while since we've had you back on the show, and it's great to have you back here now. It's good to be back. Is yeah. it, a bit's happened since the last uh, <laughs> yeah. time we've, we uh, we caught up. Mm. Uh, Eight years. In, in, in football, but also in, on my in life, personal life, life as well. In so Absolutely plenty to chat about. There is. We're going to get stuck into all of that. Let's get our second panellist out here. He's out the back. He's probably going, oh, I don't know, Damo. Uh, he, he is our second panellist. He was born on the 16th of April. 13th of April, 16th of April, 17th of April. All right? Something funny going on here. I'm down the front too. Um, yeah, he was born on the 16th of April in 2003. He's played a total of 12 games and he's kicked a total of 17 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2020, um, 2023. All right, that's now. All right, just in case. Um, and when he plays for the Melbourne Football Club, he wears the number two on his back. Could you please welcome to the show, Jacob Van Royen? It's Thank a you. Grand old flag. It's a high flying flag. It's the emblem for me and for you. Oh, they've started already. It's the emblem of the team we love, the team of the red and the blue. Every heart beats true for the red and the blue. Sing this song to you Should all acquaintance be forgot Keep your eye on the red and the blue There you go. Now, all right, debut 2023, as I just alluded to the fact, um, it's obviously his first time on the show and he's pretty bloody excited, you can see, all right? He loves, loves the old hoo, hoo, hoo. Um, how does that make you feel when you come out and you see all that? This is your first time. I know you would have done a lot of maybe engagements around the Melbourne Football Club. Is this your first time doing an outside type of thing like this? Yeah, no, it is for sure. It's pretty, okay. ne pretty nerve-wracking. <laughs> all these, all these people out in front, but no, it's, it's very exciting. Good, good. It's great to have you here. You're all making, making you feel welcome, Blue. It is really nice to have you, mate. Um, I'm going to go through a, a few different things with you boys tonight. Um, we want to talk about, well, basically in football, outside of football, that sort of thing. Uh, we'll go through it. We'll start off with our, a little bit of a discussion. Um, guys, I want to get your opinion about the buy rounds. Here's the question. Is stretching out the buy rounds um, over a month too much? It has been tried and tested a heap of different ways over the journey. I personally think this is the worst version of it. Now, I say this obviously from a supporter's point of view, 
But you, as players, do you have an opinion on it? What do you think about having the buy round running all of June as it did? Yeah, well, I mean, we don't notice it from a fan point of view. Like, we only get one buy. So yeah. for us, it just feels kind of like we get one week and then we're yeah. back into it. Um, and we really, I, I enjoy that. And I, and I think from a fan point of view, I would, I would rather have just one week off footy and then straight back into okay. it, full swing. Good. Um, so I'd probably tend to agree with you on that one. Yeah, all right. Jacob, what are your thoughts, mate? Um, for me, oh, it doesn't. It's only my first or second year, so it doesn't really yeah. affect me too much. Yeah. I haven't been around long enough, I don't think, to yeah. really, really notice yeah. too much there. So I oh, couldn't really care I've, less. I found this part interesting. We had seven games in the first week, eight games in the second week, six games in weeks three and four, spread over four days. Thursday through to Sunday, with one being the King's birthday. I just found it interesting the way that it was spread, having that one. Are you as supporters, that you're the ones that I really want to ask, what were your thoughts on having the buy rounds spread the way that they were? Just, yeah, can I see a show of hands for who liked it? Well, then I really want to see a show of hands for who didn't. Yeah, there you go. All right. There's the answer I was looking for. So it is from a supporter's perspective. I did want to get that sort of uh, out there. Saying all this, though, um, it does lead me into the King's Birthday game. Um, congratulations, Jack. Uh, I'm being awarded the Neil Danaher. Thank you. I wanted to draw attention to it because being awarded the Neil Danaher trophy for being uh, judged best of field in that game, that must have been a huge honour for you. Yeah, you know, to, to be able to you know, perform on a really special occasion, uh, not only because of the amazing effort Neil does for, for MND, but also just playing Collingwood. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they're going pretty well at the moment. Uh, so we, we really set ourselves on that game. Big occasion, it was a finals-like atmosphere, finals-like sure. crowd. So, um, yeah, it, it felt really good to, to kind of come away knowing that you know, we played really strong as a team and, yep. you know, I'd played a part in that. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to allude to the fact receiving that award on the day, knowing it's now more Neil's day than anything, I watched you in the first couple of contests and you were just on. Was there anything about the lead-up to that game that was different for you? Did you get out of bed at the right side or, or <laughs> something? Was there, was there something that just I, I really wish a... I wish I knew what it was that would just trigger those kind of performances. Uh, and if I did, I would do it every, every yeah. single week. Um, but no, it, it was just a good lead-up. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take much, you know, when you're playing in those big games, um, finals like football, it doesn't take much to kind of to get you up and about. So I personally really thrive and enjoy those kind of environments, the big stage, the big yep. stage yep. you know, those those hostile uh, crowds. Mm. It's something where, yeah, you, you know, you don't need too much motivation to, to get you out of bed in the morning. Yeah, nice. It, it was just something I noticed straight away. You just were switched on and I thought there's got to be something going on there, but you've just alluded to the fact it was the big stage. Uh, let's talk a little bit of football, past, present, future. Melbourne have had nine wins from 15 games and your percentages are pretty healthy, 126.9, which is looking good. That's the good stuff. From round 10, though, you've only had scores uh, of between 45 and 76 points at best. You've chalked up two wins from the last five games, which is not bad, but it's not great either. So here's my question to you. Where is your scoring going to come from when you see the scores that you've been achieving over the last five weeks, plus now having lost your leading goal kicker um, in Bailey Frisk, uh, who has been your leading goal kicker for the last three years? Um, my question to you from that is that he's obviously got an ankle injury and realising that your next best is Cosy with 22, JVR, Jacob Van Rome is 17, um, Chandler with 15 and Track with 12, plus your other notable forwards in Brown and McDonald who have been in and out all year either due to injury or form have, and they've only kicked a total of 17 goals between them. I just ask this as it's not an ideal start to your campaign, finals campaign. Where do you think it's going to come from? Yeah, Goody came to me at the start of the week and said, Vines, we're going to need to step up, man, kick a few go. more goals <laughs> for us. But, nice. No, you know, obviously it's something that, uh, you know, we've been struggling at in recent weeks is, is really putting the um, pressure on the scoreboard. Um, you know, we're getting opportunities. We're getting lots of, you know, inside 50s, but just our efficiency going inside forward 50 at the moment, um, you know, it's not, it's not clicking. Um, so... Yeah, we're looking at we're looking at all kind of um, phases of our game. You know, whether it's defence, um, offence, uh, and in, into our contest, we feel like it's uh, 
everyone's responsibility to help that efficiency up forward. It's not just the forwards who, no. um, it's their responsibility to kick the goals and finish in front of goals. It's it's how the midfields deliver it to yeah, them. It's yeah. how the um, defenders are trans helping us transition the ball up the ground. So we really feel like it's, um, you know, it's a really team effort to, yeah. to hit the scoreboard and um, it's something we've been working hard at the last yeah. two, three weeks. It's yeah. certainly, um, you know, really high on our priority of, of changing because we've lost the last two games. Yeah, um, yeah and, and hopefully get a really good response this week. I understand. Look, you've also lost Clayton Oliver, and I understand uh, he's still out. Um, he's not going to be playing uh, this weekend either. He's still on the sidelines, which means Track has been trying to fulfil two roles as he's lost his wingman. Melbourne are, are winning the centre clearances, as you just alluded to. You're getting it inside offensive 50. Uh, you're ranked number one in the competition for inside 50s. Um, and hit outs, which proves you're winning the ball, but you have three contributing factors stopping you from being an even more dominant side than you are at the moment, and you've proven that in the past. Accuracy, conversion, retention, and connection, all the things you just alluded to, really. Forward entries are high, but if you are not converting these opportunities into scoreboard pressure, then it's just one step forward, two steps back. And even though you are getting it inside your forward 50, uh, you are not retaining it due to your opposition being able to beat you at the ground ball contest, which means the ball comes straight back out. And is this, um, this is somewhat an accurate description, and is it a fair assessment? That was a big description. Yes. And, uh, and I apologise, but I had to get uh, it all out. I halfway through it, but... <laughs> um, Jacob no, went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. No, you know, I touched a little bit on it um, in the previous question, yeah. but... You know, I think if you look at a lot of the shots on goal at the moment, uh, they're, they're, they're really pressured. Um, so, um, you know, we're looking at the, the kind of entries we're getting, the type of entries. Um, obviously, we, we want to, when we have shots on goal, we want them to go through the big sticks, but we feel like, um, you know, the kind of shots that we're having, that they are pressured snaps, pressured kicks, um, that are that not a high chance of kind of going through the big sticks. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can get a bit bit more, uh, you know, a few more entries with a bit more space for the forwards to have a bit more time and space to really um, nail their um, nail their kicks on and shots on goal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's a big con connection piece for us, which okay. uh, we're working hard on. Yep. Got anything else to add, Rui? Yeah, no, Vine, Vine's pretty much covered it all. Like, it's something we've been working on really tirelessly over the last two, three weeks or so, and it's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's been addressed at the club and we know yeah. it's something we need to work on. So it's, yeah, just something we've been working really hard on. on yeah, And it's more of a process rather than just trying to get to the, that final destination straight away. So, yeah, we're trying a lot of different things. That's good. That's good. I know Goody's come out. He's spoken about it. He's obviously alluded to it. All the playing groups are aware of it. It's not something that, you know, Jesus, Damien, we don't need to come on the show and be reminded of it. But it is something that while the fans are here, if I can talk to you in an open format like that and then ask you about the particular things that you're seeing and what you're seeing is on the improve, then that's a good, you know, it's a good sign for the direction that we want to go in. Yeah. And, and just on that, we, we understand it. It's frustrating. It's it's frustrating dominating inside 50s. It's dom it's frustrating winning centre clearance time in forward half and still lose games of yeah. football. Uh, yeah. As as players, we come away just as frustrated and, and disappointed in those results. Um, but I suppose come Monday, come the reviews when we sit down and say, look, we we actually did dominate inside 50s, which is um, you know arguably you know some of the hardest parts of the game there are things in our game that are in really good stead and yeah. you know come finals time if, if you've gotten these these key kpis um high then you're in good stead Absolutely. so we feel like the foundations of our game are really strong and it's just maximizing um you know these these things that put scoreboard pressure on which obviously you need to do to win games of football spot on everything you said I uh, can't agree more. Okay, enough of the doom and gloom. Let's talk about you guys. Um, let's start with you, Jacob. You're a young developing footballer with an excellent uh, with excellent aerial skills, good hands, and the ability to take a great mark above your head. Um, you, you hail from WA out of Claremont, all right? Proud club with a proud history. You played uh, in back-to-back -back, uh, grand finals, uh, two obviously back-to-back -back grand finals with the Colts, playing uh, as a strong marking forward. I speak of but you also played representative football in WA under-19s as a defender. Which sort of role do you prefer? Up forward or down back? Um, well, it's, yeah, obviously I like playing forward a lot more. Like, it's 
it's more fun kicking goals yeah. and <laughs> taking big marks. I think you probably get more recognition doing that. But in our so for that state um, 18s team, we had Jai Miss. So he's he's obviously doing really well at Frio. He was um, our main forward. So and we needed needed some um, yeah key key backs in our team and. I think a few clubs had asked to see what I can do down back and so they swung me down back and had a fairly good carnival playing playing off centre half back. So yeah, yeah I, I can play both. I'm probably a little bit rusty now if I, if I went down in the back line, yeah. but I think, yeah, I, I enjoy playing forward more. The assessment that I just gave, or the description more so, of, of you as a footballer, you like taking those high marks, you're a very good aerialist, um, got good hands. That's a fair description. Is that how you like to think of yourself as a footballer? Yeah, I guess so. It's it's pretty pretty nice hearing those things said about <laughs> you. But um, no, no, it's it is my favourite part going up and take, taking a big mark. And I think think you guys, the fans, also r really love seeing that as well. So no, I love doing it. Yeah, cool, good. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I like it. Well said, mate. Well said. Um, you were picked number 19 in the 2021 um, draft. You burst onto the stage most no notably in round six Anzac Day match. Um, against the Tigers in front of 84,000 people. I was one of them. I was at that game. It was brilliant. I loved it. Um, where you kicked, where, where you kicked a bag of three, which is what the D's ended up winning by. You know that? Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. That's what you ended up winning by. Um, so my question to you is: hindsight is a wonderful thing, as we know. Goody was about to drag you off the ground. Luckily, um, you had the insight and proved them wrong. What else can you tell us about your football journey? Who else have you played with and who are you still good mates with? And what was it like playing in front of 84,000 Anzac Day Eve and bagging three in front of, as I said, 84? Um, yeah, so we'll start on that game. It was, yeah, super exciting. By far the biggest crowd I've ever played in front of. And Richmond again, like Collingwood, another, it was a pretty hostile environment there. Big supporter base and a huge team. And no matter how well they're going, they're always going to be a tough competition. And I hadn't had a very good start to that game. I think I had about three or four touches up into that last quarter and yeah. pretty much no, no impact on the game. But yeah, yeah I didn't actually realise I was going to be subbed out only, I probably heard that after all you guys did on the <laughs> on, on Goody's press conference. Um, I only heard it the next day after my dad texted me going, oh, who are you going to get subbed out? But um, no, I guess it was, yeah, super, super cool and like it was, yeah, I'm happy I could, could kick those three goals and just help the team get over the line and yeah, it was super exciting. To me, you come across as quite a confident individual and I've seen you uh, play and your celebration gives me that impression as well. Um, what it is that I'm alluding to there is that, yes, that was a good game that you played. It was great, you kicked the three goals, it was in front of 84,000. I go back to the other questions that allude to your confidence. When you were growing up and you were going through your, your, premier, your state division and, and so forth, what sort of mates did you have around you? What sort of support, and are you still good friends with their, those people now? Yeah, so a lot of a lot of guys who still play for those West Australian teams. So one player who I remember playing a lot on, who's um, on Frio's, is Heath Chapman. He's he's been going well, and he's given me a few baths over over okay. the time when, when we were a bit younger. But then also, yeah, your guys like Jai Miss, Matt Johnson, Neil Erasmus, a lot of the Frio boys. I'm okay. I'm pretty close with, but. Yeah, so like, and growing up in Claremont as well, there's always guys older than you and younger than you coming coming through the ranks as well. So even just being able to look up at them and follow follow in their steps and even talk to them about their journeys is is really helpful. And I think it it's a good environment over there for to, to grow up and play high level football. Nice. How are you feeling about the trip coming across the Nullarbor? And now you're you're playing for the Melbourne Football Club. You live here in Melbourne. Um, you obviously playing F AFL at the highest level. What's all that, how is that all, how are you taking all that in? Um, oh, it's definitely a challenge being a, being away from your family and friends. Like you come come to a new city virtually knowing no one and having to start and all you have is the boys at the footy club and credit to them like through to the older boys all the way down to the younger boys who get drafted with. Everyone's very welcoming and I got put in a host family and they, they were all, right. all very good. I mean. Yeah, last year was was a little tough. Just being first year, being away from your family and friends, not knowing anyone. This year, though, I think I've settled in a bit more. I've moved out of the host family and yeah. and are starting to really really enjoy Melbourne this year. Not just with my footy, but also just as a city in general. That's great. I like that. He likes Melbourne, everyone. That's good. Well done.
Thank you, mate. Not meaning to put you on the spot, but you handled that very well. Over to you, Jack. Uh, your footy story has been well documented, having been able to play at the beloved D's under the father-son mm. rule. Um, and in this time, there has been a lot of personal growth areas throughout your journey, both internally and externally. You've been gifted with the ability to win some personal accolades along the way. You won a BNF in 2016. You were co-captain for three years at the club. Uh, you're a prem premiership player and you are greatly admired for your footy toughness. So what I wanted to ask you, what, when you look back, have you enjoyed the most about your time at the club? Is it the friendships just as much as the rewards and goals? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, one of the most special things about, you know, sport uh, and team environment is the relationships you build and the things you sacrifice together as a team. And absolutely. You now, luckily, uh, we did achieve that premiership in 2021, kind of the ultimate goal of of you know playing AFL and when I first got to the club we were nowhere near it mm. I think we were you know second bottom of the ladder behind G GWS who were just fresh into the system yeah. so we we won two games my first year got beaten by multiple 100 point losses and you know got my coach was sacked halfway through the year and um, yeah you know similar to to what West Coast what position they're in now yeah. I, I, I you know can relate to a lot of um, you know, being in that position. So to see, you know, start from there and then to come, come full circle and, and win the, um, not full circle, but, you know, win the, win the flag, you know, a few years later, um, just the fulfilment of yeah. playing a role in that is something that I'll be, you know, eternally kind of grateful yeah. for. I like the, um, the whole aspect of, you know, 2016 BNF, um, captain, co-captain for three years, um, you go on, you win a premiership flag, you play at, for, for the club that you love. Your old man played there, also a captain of the, uh, of the club. Um, it must just, at some times, be surreal. You know, pinch me moments. That's wonderful what you've achieved. I wanted to go on. Uh, you're a dad now to Chloe and, and, and uh, Miller. Uh, Myla? Miller? Miller. Miller, yeah. Miller, yeah. yeah. Um, congratulations on that, first thank of all. You, thank you. I know there was a circumstance. Um, uh, she had a little bit of wet lung when she was born, so there was a little bit of difficulty that yep. you went through. Um, everything's all right. And yeah, yeah, no, wonderful all, now. All good. Um, yeah, it was a uh, uh, after the birth of, of Chloe, my second child. She kind of got um, rushed off to the kind of the mm. intensive nursery there for a while. Yep. So for about a day, there was a. You know, it was tough for my wife, Charlotte. Yeah. She just had given birth to little Chloe and didn't get to kind of hug her or hold yeah. her for for a day there. Wow. So that was challenging. But yeah. you know, after that, it was it's been smooth sailing, and yeah. she's been an absolute champion. I like that when a dad just, says smooth, uh, smooth sailing. Yeah. There's obviously, no crying <laughs> going on at night or anything like that. Um, what has been the most rewarding thing out of your life experiences? Can I suggest, as I just alluded to then, most people have ambitions, desires, and goals. You've achieved more than most could ever wish for. And I, I say that because everything that I alluded to before about your internal with the uh, Melbourne Football Club, but also your external, beautiful wife, two lovely kids, everything's happy. How do you feel in life? How's everything with you? Uh, yeah, I, I'm extremely grateful for uh, my wife and my family and, and the life we're kind of building together. That's certainly one of the proudest things of my life. But, um, you know, it, it's... Uh, I'm trying to work out how to phrase this or put yeah. this, but you know, just and, and Jacob could um, could relate. But in, in professional sport, you just face with challenges yeah. every single week, and and having to uh, go through adversity. Um, mm. You know, whether it's around you know selection, which you know Jacob's facing at the moment, and yeah. whether it's injury, whether it's form, whether it's you know this and that, um, and just being in such a public eye. Yeah. Um, that high pressure environment, everyone's sure. looking at you every single day. How they get, how you're getting better, how you're improving. So, okay. just facing facing challenges every single day, every single yeah. week, and finding ways to improve, overcome yeah. them. Um, yeah, that's probably something that I'll, I'll look back on and um, be really proud of throughout oh, my career. I love it. How candid. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Very well said. Very well said. Uh, I admire what you've been able to achieve. I love the, the progress of what you've been through to get where you are. It's just wonderful. Uh, following on, the, on from this, what do you think is your best skill or attribute? And I ask this to both of you. Uh, I spoke about your high marking. I like the aerial work, um, your confidence. But I, I want to ask you both, just in, in, if you had to be told 
uh, or if you had to tell somebody like me right now, um, what is your best attribute or skill? In terms of just in life or playing football? I, I would like both. If, if you want to give both, if you want to just give football, that's fine. But um, I think just in general, I'm a fairly calm person. Like okay. it takes a fair bit for me to get worked up and really stressed mm -hmm. out. Yeah, um, right. So that's something something that help can be can be quite helpful in the in the job that we're in. For um, sure. And there, yeah, in in the footy, I think, yeah, my my uh, attack at the ball and my my marking ability. Yeah, is that something that you is that your go-to? Is that your one thing you don't always know you can rely on? Um, yeah. So like taking back to that Richmond game, there was a few times where I was trying to outbody my my, my defender who was bigger, older, older, stronger than me, and um, like. Jake Lever, um, Steve May just came up to me and just said to me, go back to what you're good at, and that's jumping jumping at the ball, getting a run and jump and having a fly. And when I did that, I, I started to have a have a really big impact oh, on the game and yeah, ended up kicking those that? three goals. That's great. Well done. Uh, Jack, skill or attribute, what's the one thing that would be your... Uh, I think uh, footy, it's probably like my physicality, yep. you know, hunt on, hunt on the ball, similar to Jacob, but yep. just not airily, more on the ground. <laughs> um, and then, you know, probably away from footy, I think, just my ability to be able to endure um, discomfort. Um, and, you know, that's, that's like I was speaking before about, you know, mm -hmm. adversity and, you know, finding, you know, I might not want to go do something, yeah. but if I know it's good for me, I'll, I'll be able to push my way through it. So yeah, I, think, I think that's something that's been a you know, good attribute of mine over the years. I like that. Yeah, very nice. In relation to your football journey, we all need good support, network and family and friends. Who's been your greatest support and influence? Um, so, yeah, so far it would have, have to be my mum and dad. And, okay. yeah, so my dad's been a really, really big supporter of mine as well as my mum. My dad wouldn't, yeah, miss any of my games for wow. the world. Like, would would watch, what would have watched all the live stream Casey games last year when I was younger going to every game. He's flown over to Melbourne this weekend because um, my brother's playing in the State 18s champ against Vic Metro, I think. So okay. he'll go watch that on Sunday morning and come over to the Casey, oh, ca Casey game and, and come watch us. So he's been really good. Mum, mum also gets dragged along to all the games. I don't, She's not the biggest footy fan, so honestly, I don't know if she knows what's going on half the time. <laughs> but, but no, she she is always there. And then, like two younger brothers, like yeah, they always always look up to you. And yep. I never really realised that till I got I got a bit older and realised how much impact I can have on on having two little brothers. And it's great to see them having having some success now. Like my other brother is in the yep. State Eighteens team. Great insight, mate. Well done. Mum and Dad both live in WA, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So everyone's still back in Perth. Wow. So that, and, and they're making the commute. Um, well, Dad more often than Mum, but either way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's really great support. Um, who's, who's yours, Jake? Yeah, similar. Be my, my, my family. Obviously, my mum and dad. Uh, my best mate's my brother. Yeah. Uh, I get a lot of love from him. And, and obviously now with my wife and uh, Chloe's too young to know what's going on. But... Yeah. Um, you know, Miller, Miller's starting to turn into a real, real good support, particularly after losses. She'll come up and give me a hug no matter what. Oh, so, uh, perfect. Excellent. Yeah, she's, yeah, uh, she's nice. been a good support of, of recent. It's funny, uh, well, it's not funny, but it, it, um, you've, been, you've been in the system now for a while and you now know how important that, that network is. So it's something you would impart as knowledge over to Jacob and say, keep that network of good people around you. They're the ones that are always going to get you through it. That'd be great advice, I would assume. Yeah, absolutely, and um, you know I hate to say it, but there's going to be plenty more challenges later <laughs> in your career, Jacob. Uh, they're coming, mate. So yes. you've got to get put a good network around That's you, and it. they will uh, they'll help you through the uh, the hard times. There you go. Great advice right there. Um, is there something uh, from your junior footy, from your junior footy, that has stayed with you? I don't know. We're not in your 40s, but I'm just suggesting from your junior footy that has stayed with you. Um, and I mean something that may, you may have had a lack of or something that you actually probably uh, were gifted in that has stayed with you and has, has now been in your favour. I talk about either speed, agility, your size, core strength, ability to read the play, um, tackling pressure in and under, um, something that has made you the footballer that you are today. Is there something that you can take from your junior footy that you'd apply into now? Um, oh, it's pretty hard to look back on one thing. I think one thing for me was always just making sure I enjoyed it because 
Oh, which good. Like when I was younger, I would get times where I almost wouldn't wouldn't want to play just because yeah, right. I was not feeling feeling too great or had felt too much pressure. And as a yeah, 15, 16 year old, it's For not sure. not really nice to feel. So I think over the last probably three three four years, it's just making sure I'm enjoying playing my footy because it's when I'll train harder, it's when I'll play harder, it's when when I'll play better as well when I'm when I'm really enjoying things. That's good because it probably re uh, relates back to the comment of you going and having a chat with Stephen May and Jake Lever and saying do what do what comes natural to you, be you. Go back out there and play that kind of football. Mm -hmm. You go back out there, you do exactly that. You don't get dragged. You kick three goals. Eighty-four thousand people. I'm here. You know that's yeah. fabulous. Well done. Uh, yeah, mine. Mine would probably be my, my physicality. Uh, I said it was one of my strengths, and it's been a strength of mine all through junior footy. It got me in a lot more trouble as a junior, though. Um, you know, not not every kid at, at uh, playing junior football or at school football is playing at, at, at that kind of uh, physicality. So I had multiple instances growing up as a kid where, uh, you know, I had parents kind of abusing me at half time or oh, really? yeah yeah you know, you. yeah yeah Jesus. so uh you know I, I had to play up up a couple of years uh growing up uh so yeah it's good that you know you get the afl everyone's playing playing footy the right way <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not getting into trouble as much <laughs> yeah. watch out i'm coming through look out um identifying your characteristics and your personality traits new blood comes into the club uh, be that a draftee, a new recruit, or a traded player, how much more motivation does it give you to exceed and, um, and excel? And likewise, does it also bring out the competitive beast in you? Repeat the question. Pro well, sorry. new blood comes into the club. Yes. Right. Your first thoughts are you're either going to look at them and go, you've actually inspired me, I want to get better and I want to show you exactly how good I can be. At the same time, does it bring out the competitive beast in you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, whilst uh, football is a, is a team sport, uh, you, you, it's competitive in the sense you play for your spot and mm. um, just being the competitive people we have at the Melbourne Football Club, yeah. uh, you want to continue to improve and get better. And, you know, just from my own personal experience, you know, playing with Clayton Oliver, Christian Petrarca, obviously two of the best players in the competition, it's... Uh, Every day I, I go to go to work, and it's like I've got to get better to, to match up with these guys. Yeah. So, um, certainly a, a huge source of inspiration is getting new people in the in the door, seeing yeah. what their talents are, seeing them develop, um, and then when they when they they get to your level, it's like, well, now that now it's on, you know, we've got to. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're trying, trying to outdo each other here, Good. so That's there's certainly that healthy piece. competitive uh, environment yeah. at footy clubs. Love it. Um, well, it's a bit hard for me to speak on that because I've only been yeah. around about around a year or so. But no, for me, when you guys come in, it's well, the probably five new guys that have come in since I've been here. It's just been more exciting for me just to to meet meet new people and mm. and and learn about new people. And um, whether it's yeah, I play with them at AFL or VFL level, it's they're still yeah teammates of mine and just getting to learn how to work with these people. But then again, um, like Jack said, it's just it is more competition for spots, so it also yeah. pushes you to work harder. And I guess that that's a good thing you want to have Absolutely. a football club. So the yeah. guys below pushing the guys above to to get better. And yeah, I think it's a really really great environment good. that we're in. Excellent. All right, you're coming up against the uh, Saints this weekend, uh, Mar Marvel Stadium. The game kicks off at 7:25 p.m. on Saturday night. Saints are coming off a win against West Coast. Um, it wasn't a convincing win, though. The Saints were trailing by one point going to the last quarter and, and in accuracy ended up giving them just an eight-point win. Uh, they have got their fair share of injuries going into this one. Battle out with concussion. Clark, Hill and Membry and Ross all with knee complaints. Membry a little bit longer, um, longer term injury. Uh, but they may welcome back Jack Hayes, uh, who has missed all of this season so far. It will be a good test for you guys. Both clubs, Saints fifth on the ladder versus Dees, who are fourth on the ladder. Percentage could be a telling factor come finals time, but you first have to get the four points. How much are you looking forward to this game and how well do you guys think you play Marvel? I'm extremely excited for this <laughs> Great. game of football. Um, first game at Marvel for the year, I think. Yeah. Uh, so that's exciting. And then, you know, obviously fourth play fifth on the ladder. So, mm. 
it's a huge game, both, both on the same amount of points. And absolutely, you know, we're not not really reading too much into um, their performance against the West Coast. We know that they're a really strong side, and yeah. just and they looking, play Marvel well. Yeah, yeah. Just looking at some of their defensive numbers, there, I think the best team in the in the comp, kind of um, in a lot of key defensive KPIs. So mm. they're a super strong side, and yeah, we really have to prepare well, and we have prepared well for for Saturday night for sure, Jacob. Um, well, it's a little different for me since I'll be um, playing VFL this week. Okay, so right. we are playing Sandringham, though, who are yep. aligned to St Kilda. So yep. it's it's a pretty similar process, just mm. in terms of meetings and going going mm. all, over all the same things. And each player has the same same things to work on, whether it's at AFL or VFL level. So no, it's it's really exciting and just a, another opportunity to put my name up for, for, selection for selection the following week. I mean, well, good luck in the VFL on the weekend. I hope that you do exceptionally well. hope this show has inspired you in some way and then says, do you know what? I really want to get out there and get back into the A-team a uh, and start playing AFL at the top level. I just wanted to say all the best to both of you. Good luck on the weekend and for the rest of the season. Stay injury free, OK? But enjoy your footy along the way. Go, Dees. Go, Dees. All right, what we're going to do now, we've, uh, we've just spoken a little bit about um, past, present, future. We now just want to find out a little bit more in depth about the boys. Nothing where we're going to have to, you know, no stalker stuff here. Um, but we'll do it in our first little segment. It's called What About Me? All right, now I know you boys love, both love your footy. I just want to find out a little bit more about your footy journey. At what age did you first realise that you both wanted to play a AFL? Four. Four? Yeah, would would have had to be similar age, really? five, six, I reckon. Now, are we talking that you were playing little league, or you were just like that enthused about getting? I never wanted to be an astronaut, a policeman. <laughs> like was, uh, Good answer. I was all, I was footy player all the way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, just down at Auskick, yeah, everyone wants to be yeah. a footy player there, so yeah. it's all the same yeah. for everyone. Aspire to it. Um, who's been your best mate at the club since arriving? Oh. Um, I would say I would say Petrarca. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Christian. That's yeah, all that. So right, that'll do. Um, well, my, mine would be Andy. Andy Moners Wakefield. So he's one of the other younger boys. I've okay. moved into the host family with him, and now move. We've moved out into a place together this oh, year. Nice. Um, should the should the landlords be worried or? No, we're, yes. we're good kids. Yeah. <laughs> well done. All right. So describe for us what you were thinking turning up. And this is going back a little while, I, I get it, right? Uh, but it's very fresh in your mind. Um, so describe for us what you were thinking on your first day when you turned up at the club. Where you had to park, where you had to sit, and who was the first person that made you feel welcome? Ah, jeez, this is a good question. I don't, can't remember a lot of it. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just remember it was at, we were still at well, Amy Park, first yeah. day. Um, who made me feel most welcome? Uh, you go, I'll, I'll come back. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay, do some thinking time. A um, little bit fresher for you, yeah, so. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, well, I rocked up with mm. Reese Conker, so he's our new player development yeah, manager. Yeah, yeah, player development manager. So him, he drove myself, um, Taj, and Judd all in because we were all staying at an Airbnb just because we had all moved over from WA. Yep. Yeah. Um, and yeah, coming in it was a pretty surreal experience just after these guys had just won the Premiership. So seeing guys like Jack, um, Track, Clary, Gorney, all these guys who you've just seen win a grand final was, was pretty surreal. Like it's hard, uh, yeah, it's, it, even now it's hard to remember <laughs> who, who was the first one to make you feel welcome. I think everyone's already very, very welcoming when you, when you come straight in. That's good, everyone threw their arms around you. Uh, and I don't remember anything. Still, still don't have no recollection. That's all right, you were so captivated by your story that yeah, you went there on it. Um, who did you grow up supporting and who was your favourite footballer when you were growing up? I know your answer's gonna be probably. Yeah, but, I didn't have much of an option yeah. growing up. Who, who was your um, favourite player? Uh, funny enough, it was actually Shane Wodin. Um, oh, right, okay. The D's, got yeah. Taj debuting this week, Absolutely. which is exciting. Yeah, um, very. Another father son. Yep. Uh, yeah, I remember my eighth birthday party. We had like a footy party, and uh, you know the Demon Army actually made me a banner for my my birthday, and uh, had a guest appearance, which was Shane uh, where Woden's come down. No so I was the, I was the coolest kid in town at school for that, <laughs> for that next week. I love it. 
Um, yeah, so being from Perth, I grew up supporting supporting Frio. So yeah, it's, it's a bit different to Melbourne. And um, yeah, when I was growing up, Pav, Pav was probably in his prime. So Matthew yeah. Pavlich is, has always been my favourite player growing up. He'd be a good role model for you, you know, having the same sort of ilk there's someone to aspire to. What was the feeling like when you first got a glimpse of yourself in the Melbourne kit? First time. You know, you, oh, no, you probably Damn. <laughs> I'll, I'll go first on this one. Again. Yeah. Um, Tell us what it was like for you. You, like, you just caught a glimpse of yourself, reflection in the mirror. Or, well, I reckon it wasn't until that... probably this year when I played in the in the practice match because well, last year was all all in the VFL. But yeah, pulling on the jersey for the first time wow. in that practice match and um, being being in the number two as well, having such a rich history Absolutely. at the club was yeah pretty pretty exciting and an honour for me. Wow, that's awesome. So, Jack? Uh, I just remember, uh, similar to, to Rui, I, I remember the feeling of putting it on um, for my first practice game. Okay. I, was, I was a lot, I was really nervous for the very first time I played, yeah, it was at Marvel Stadium against North Melbourne. Right. Uh, and I was far more nervous for that game than I was for my de debut win on round one. Wow. Um, that's all I can really remember, though. Okay. Um, Any yeah, specific fact. reason, though? Oh, it was just, it was just the first time just you first. were running out as yeah. an AFL player, yeah. playing for the, yeah. for the Demons, playing against another AFL team. Wow. Um, so it didn't matter. It was practice match as an 18-year-old. It was all the same. It was an AFL game of footy, your first one. Absolutely. So yeah. I, was, uh, I was shit scared. <laughs> yeah, good. All right. Since your time at the club, who has impressed you the most with both their professionalism, their work ethic? and their work rate. Who's really stood out for um, you? Oh, probably for me, two guys and they're, yeah, two of the best players in our team. So Christian Petrarca, like he's, the, all the extra stuff you see him doing and um, you kind of get the insight on it now with all his TikToks he, he likes to post. But um, yeah, so he's someone, and then Clayton Oliver as well, just how hard and how intense he is at training and then all, all the extra gym work he does is, is yeah, it's, it's inspiring to see what, what it takes and it shows you why these guys are so good at what they do. How good's that? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Um, you know, these guys spend the most time um, outside of the program on their bodies and, yeah. and on their footy, so yeah, no, uh, no coincidence yeah. why they're two of the best in the game. Makes sense. Um, what is your mindset when you go out to play? Um, what's your individual focus and what do you say to yourself to get in the zone? And I would relate this question back to what I thought you were doing on King's birthday. Like, what do you actually do to get in the zone? When it was there a focus? Is there something that? Yeah, I, I really, I just try and stay really, really kind of present and aware of of the uh, the crowd and the ground and my teammates. I don't go in with any really specific, particular focuses about how I want to play or. Okay. Um, how I want to start the game. Uh, you know, I, I feel like when I'm in, you know, in that present moment and in that that state of just enjoying, you know, what I'm doing. That's when my my strengths really yeah. come out. Um, yeah, and you're kind of playing more and you on that instinct. Um, I've typically found that uh, I play my best football when I'm like that in my career. For sure. Yeah, for me, it's kind of what I alluded to before, in just terms of being relaxed and enjoying it at mm -hmm. this. This stage, like over the yeah, 10, 12 games I've played, the ones I've played the, the best in and um, felt, felt most comfortable when I'm just relaxed and yeah. enjoying it and feel, feel comfortable in that environment. Like the ones where I'd get myself worked up about it are generally the ones that you probably don't like to have the impact okay. you want. And yeah, and, and just for me, it's just doing what the team needs. I'm not trying to go, go away from that, especially yeah, just being, yeah, being a 10, 12 game player. It's good that you're acknowledging that now at a 10 to 12 game player because that's going to hold you in good stead as you go into your career further down the track, which is great. Um, do you get nervous on the big stage or you just believe in your abilities when you go across the line? I get a little bit nervous for, for massive games, but um, yeah, kind of for the majority of the season, I'm pretty, pretty relaxed. Uh, it's only for special occasions that the nerves, the nerves are there. Can I then ask you, what was it like running out the grand final in front of, what, 46,000 people that it was at um, up to stadium in Perth? You guys won. Well, there were plenty of nerves for the grand final. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's a, that's a big build up, uh, particularly because we had the week off. Mm. Um, I think I was actually probably more nervous the week. Uh, so we played Geelong in the prelim, and then I think I was really nervous for for that week because okay. we had a lot of time off. Because um, because we yeah we obviously had the two weeks till the grand final. The mm. the club gave us a few days off post post the Geelong game. So I remember kind of really spending a lot of time in my head uh, playing it out. Yeah. Oh my God, we're in a grand final. Uh, what if we lose? What if we win? Um, but then once once the week started and you got you get back into your routine of training and um, this and that, yeah, the the nerves ease away. You just get back into work and the process. Uh, but then you know, obviously, the night before uh, and the morning of the, the game, the, <laughs> the nerves the nerves come up again. So yeah, it was nerve wracking. But you just go back to the, the mindset skills which yeah. um, we've been trying to hone um, every week for for the season. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, all right? We're in that position to, um, you know, to have that ability. When you were preparing for the game and then to get the result that you did, how do you, you weren't able to celebrate it the way that oh, everybody here would have loved to have celebrated it. It was, it was tough times for everybody. Everybody was going through, you know, COVID restrictions and lockdowns and quarantines and curfews and all, oh, Jesus, you know, it was all, um, all too much for me. Um, but the point that I wanted to make is, yeah, you've won the grand final, you're in Perth, you couldn't celebrate it with the people that were here. What was all that about for you? Like, how, how did you deal with that? And again, I talk about it from a hindsight. Yeah, I mean, we gave, we gave it a good crack in Perth, um, <laughs> celebrating, but obviously our loved ones weren't there, which, which was really tough, so... You know, to have to FaceTime my wife and my, my dad after the game and show them the medal, that's obviously not how you want it to go down, um, particularly when they've been through all of the really um, tough times with you. Absolutely. Uh, and then not to, not to be able to celebrate the, the highest um, of it all, it's uh, a real shame. Mm. Um, and I know, I know my, uh, my wife's really keen on... And she's pushing hard. She's like, "You got, you got to win another one uh, in Melbourne." So there's still plenty, yeah. of, still plenty of fire in the belly. Don't worry about that. I think there's a lot of people here that would love to see that happen. Um, that's great. Thank you for sharing that because it's something that obviously I spoke to the boys. They came back. A lot of you were at that show that we did at the Mulgrave Country Club, and um, it was fabulous to be with Gorney and Track to, to just get their insight into it. But um, knowing that you've been such a stalwart at the club, and, and you know. Most people, when you think of the Melbourne Football Club, you think of the Vineys, um, and I wanted to get your thoughts on it. And so it's it's impressive that what you went through and came out the other end. Fabulous, well done. Um, so my question over to you, um, asking this: Do you get nervous out on the big stage, or um, is it you just believe in your natural abilities as well? Yeah, I do do a little bit. Like Vine said before, that first practice match was probably the one I was most nervous for, and then. Yeah. Then obviously your debut, like I woke up about five o'clock that morning and couldn't get back to sleep, but I think that's just, yeah, just the excitement and the nerves racing and like you, you might be thinking, oh no, I'm going to be tired, mm -hmm. like oh, what's going to happen? But I think once you get out there and the adrenaline starts pumping and like for that game, I didn't really calm down until about <laughs> the third quarter and yeah. started to feel a bit more comfortable. But yeah, but other than that, generally I find I'm pretty... Pretty relaxed, and yeah, like I say, pretty pretty calm before good. games. Focus. Um, describe for us in one word the one word that you think best describes each other. Jack, you describe Jacob. Jacob, you describe Jack. One word. What would it be? John. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> it's bossing him around. I like that. Competitor. Oh, nice. Very good word. He's taking my word. That's. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'll say aggressive. Okay, yeah. You mean, yeah, I get that. That's good. Describe for us, um, in your word, um, your, each other's sense of humour. Jack, what do you think Jacob's sense of humour is like? And Jacob, what do you think Jack's is? He's um. <laughs> getting excited already. I hope you taste the right way, but he's not like, a, he's not like your, your funny guy. You know, like he's just a sensible... Good human. Um, nice. Well, that's a beautiful compliment. Yeah, he's a big cutie. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. One word. 
They're looking into each other's eyes. It's beautiful. If you could see it. One word. Soft. Soft. Uh, oh. I'm not happy with that one. <laughs> you push for it. <laughs> I've got two words. Okay. Dad jokes. Oh, okay. All right. That's fair. Yeah, that's uh, okay. We'll go. Quickly moving on. Uh, do you have a cause or hobby that you're deeply passionate about outside of football? Just a cause or a hobby that you're deeply passionate about? Um, I, I enjoy surfing a fair bit, so okay. when we have days off or a few days off, um, if the waves are good, I'll try to drive down a Torquay or um, back the other way around the peninsula to ride or Sorrento oh, nice. and, and try to go for a surf. It, yeah, it can be a bit annoying that the waves are an hour, hour and a half away, but yeah, yeah when, I, when I get the time and have the, have the energy to do it, I'll, I'll, I'll go down for a surf. Good and way to clear off. your head too, mate. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. definitely, for sure. Yeah, I'm a bit of a gamer, so okay. when, uh, when the kids... Kids are asleep, which isn't often. Uh, I like to get get online and okay. yeah, jump on the computer. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Any particular game you want to allude to? Uh, I'm playing a game called Diablo, Diablo okay. at the moment. Yeah. So yeah, instead of kind of jumping on Netflix or whatever yeah. on the spare time, I'll just jump on the, uh, the PC. Nice. Okay. Uh, what is the one headline that you would like to wake up and read about yourself? Viney's won the lottery. Oh, <laughs> nice. All right. Cool. <laughs> Was it free related? <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, a, a, a mark of the year would be pretty cool. There you go. Like All right, very nice. Good. A little help from the audience, but that's very good. Who's been your toughest opponent um, that you've ever played against thus far in your career? Um, ooh. I've had, yeah, well, yeah, I think Stephen May, yeah, would, would be up there training on him yeah. day in, day out at, at, um, yeah, at the club. That's good conditioning, can, mate. Yeah, yeah, it can be pretty tough and I don't know, like, I've, I've had a lot of good defenders even over my first 12 games, mm. like, I've found myself on some of the best a lot of the time. It's hard to, hard to pinpoint one okay. of them. All right, Jack, who's been your uh, I had a few years ago, I played on Danger um, okay. in, down in Geelong, and he, yeah, there was, he just was so dominant, there was nothing much I could do. Wow. And I was kind of blown away with yeah. his, you know, strength and power, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's up there. What's, uh, what's the one smell that you can't resist or walk past? <laughs> can't resist or walk past. Mm. Could it be hot chips? Could it be the smell of hot bread? Could it be uh, um, coffee? Could it be smell yeah, of fresh yeah, I, cut do, I do love the smell of like coffee beans. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, do, I, do like, I do love that smell. Okay. Um, oh, I don't know, that's a hard one. Like you, you always love the smell of fast food when you go past, but yeah, um, yeah not, not, I don't eat much fast food. <laughs> yeah. but, Try and um, resist it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. Um, have you been in a situation where someone has recognised you and it was kind of embarrassing? Uh, probably. Nothing springs to mind? Nothing springs to mind. No? Possibly? Jacob, how have you gone in your first 12 games? Um, yeah, it is a little bit weird because people sometimes don't even say anything to me. They'll just, from a distance, just shout out, Roo, and it's like, <laughs> I don't... I don't really know how to respond to it, so... <laughs> I actually, now I'm thinking about it, I get a lot of fans come up to me and call me Todd, which is... Uh, really? That, that always makes for an awful conversation. Oh. I don't even pull them up anymore. I'm just, I just roll with it. <laughs> wow. What's the weirdest thing you've been asked to sign? I mean, yeah, you get a lot of kids asking you to sign their foreheads and, and things okay. like that. That's so, a common thing yeah, at the moment. Yeah. I'm hearing that a lot. That, that yeah. Okay. yeah, no, I'd agree. Be, you know, school yeah. camps or whatever, they want you to sign their arms or yeah. some yeah. weird yeah. pencil they've got or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Mum and Dad's not going to be happy when you get home. Um, you're walking through the airport, the shopping centre, or, or you're sitting at home and you're watching KO and a billboard or an image comes up of you. What do you think? What's your first impression? I haven't had any billboards or anything <laughs> come up from there yet, so... Not yet? Let Vons Waiting for like, it? I don't think I've had one either. No? Oh, all right, OK. Um, my last couple of questions to you. Who is the AFL club that you like to beat the most? I think for me, 
I haven't, we haven't, I haven't beaten them yet, but beating Frio, I think, would be, would be pretty good. Just, just growing up, going for them yeah. and I think that they, they, I had a few picks where they overlooked me in the draft as well. So then coming to Melbourne, like, get, get one back on them would be <laughs> nice. I thought he was going nice, to say something but, else yeah. and I went, ooh, yeah, yeah, very good. Nice. Who's the club? Uh, yeah, I always love beating, beating the best. Um, <laughs> you know, the Springs to mine is, you know, Collingwood, Geelong. Um, yeah. Obviously, Richmond as well. Yeah, you know the clubs with the big, yeah. big, big supporter bases. They're normally oh, yeah. big games. Play Anzac Eve, um, Queen's Bir- King's Birthday now. So they're the big ones that you want to cool. you want to win. The siren is gone. You're trailing by five points. You need to win the game. Who do you want? Who's got the ball in their hands to get you across the line? Boo! Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you can say you. Frit is Frit is a pretty good kick. I reckon. Yeah. I'll, Back Bailey Fritch in. Okay, all right, nice. On the count of three, don't look at each other, look out into the audience. No. Which club has got the most feral supporters? One, two, three. Port. Oh, don't, <laughs> don't want to answer that one. No? Just Port and that's it? You don't have any? I don't know. I, I haven't experienced them all yet, so oh, it's hard okay. to Colin, say. Colin, no. I can... I, 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 Name off a few. Collingwood are up there too. <laughs> yeah, all right, that goes without saying. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the boys. <laughs> all right, so you boys just get to relax and be, you know, nonchalant at the moment. It's up to you two. Let's see how you go. Here comes your first question. How many premierships has the Melbourne Football Club won? Katrina. Michael. Katrina. 13. Well done. She's off the mark. So that's one point, Jacob. Beautiful. There it is. Um, how many times has your team played in a losing grand final? Katrina. Katrina. Five. Five it is. Well done, Katrina. <laughs> wow. Who is your team's captain? Michael. Katrina. Oh, Michael. Max Gore. Yes, well done, mate. You're off the mark. Jack's very happy about that. Who wears the number six at your Michael, club? Katrina. Michael. Brody Grundy. Well done. Two each. How many members does your club currently have Katrina. closest to within a thousand? Katrina. Sixty-five thousand. Wow, sixty-four thousand nine hundred and seventy-six. <laughs> wow, she's only twenty-four off. Uh, well done, Katrina. Very, very good. Where did your team finish on the ladder at the end of the home and away season last year? Michael. Twin. Michael. Second. Second is correct. Well done. How many games did you win last year at the end of the Katrina. home? Katrina. Oh, sorry. How uh, no, yeah, that's right. Uh, how many games did we win in the home and away? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. How many? Uh, uh, you've buzzed in. I'll have to let you go. It would be 18. No. Mm. Michael? 16. 16 is correct. Well done. There you go. What year did your team last win a grand final? What Katrina. did they play? Katrina. 2021. Uh, and the rest of the question? 2021, and who was the team? Oh, I'll give uh, it to you again. Uh, Western Bulldogs. There you go. All right, you get the points. Well done. Um, how many points did you win that grand final by? Michael. 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 73? 72. No, mm. Katrina. It was 76, wasn't it? No. Mm. You, Michael, 73? No. No. <laughs> 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 Katrina, no. No, bad luck. Neither of you. 74. Oh. 74 points. Who was the Norm Smith medalist? Katrina. Michael? Katrina. Christian Petrarca. There you go. All right. This is, what have we got? Four versus five. All right. Nice and close. This is for two points. Who was your club's leading goal kicker in 2022 and how many goals did they kick? Katrina. Oh. Katrina, yes. It was um, Bailey Fritch. It was. And he kicked, oh gosh, it was, um, it was 74, was it? No. Oh. No. Would you like to have a go, Michael? Sorry, the, the question was this year or last year? No, how many, uh, no, who was your club's leading goal kicker in 2022 and how many goals did they kick? It was Bailey Fritch, that's correct. How many goals did he kick? 56. 55. Oh, you paid that luck, mate. Bad luck. That's a uh, half. No. Uh, just, just one point to Katrina because she got Bailey Frisk. That's it. Um, this is for three points, okay? Player, year, and votes. Who was the last Melbourne player to win a Brownlow medal in what year and how many votes did they Michael. hold? Michael. Shane Wowoden. That's one point. Year and votes. 2,000. That's two points. 24. Mm. That's three points. Oh. Well done. Congratulations. 
Yes, so yes. Oh, Swore. Seven, seven versus six. That was good. All right. One last question. It could be a draw or we could have a winner. Who out of these three players has played the most games in the hit? Wait until the, in, the entirety of the question. Who out of these three players has played the most games in the history of the Melbourne Football Club? Is it A, Robert Flower, B, Nathan Jones, or C, Jim Stein? Mark Trenner. Oh. 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 Yeah, I think it was Michael. Michael, who was it? Nathan Jones. It was Nathan Jones. Therefore, you are our winner. Got pinned at the post. There you go. Wow, we. That was great. You guys were really, really good. All right. Um, Michael's harder to say for us than Katrina. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We're not actually giving away houses or anything, so you'll be all right. Um, Michael, uh, you've won a That's Good for Footy Football. Uh, oh, yeah. And the, and the irony of this, Karina, uh, Katrina, is you actually brought one before the show, but you've won too. <laughs> All right, so uh, there you go. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you, Thank you very much Thank for playing. You. Simply the Best was proudly brought to you by Yamaha and the Big Pitch people. They are the experts in home theatre technology. The Big Pitch people are located in Hoppers Cross in Clyde North, um, South Morang, Cheltenham, Water Gardens and the Gold Coast. Thanks for playing, guys. It was wonderful to have you here. All right. Now, what I need you to do is replace the jumper number with a score, um, then give on the, me, the player, of, of that total. And I'm going to explain how it works. So it's going to be like a, a first score, first score quarter. So it's Stephen May, Stephen May equals two. two. No. So first score, first score quarter. So the first person I read out is the goals. Second person I read out is the points, and then you've got then you've got an end result. You with me? Right. So, so seven. There you go, spot on. So the first one, first example is... Don't explain any more. No, 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 just, just for Jake. Stephen May versus, and Stephen May. Six, so it's six points, one point, equals seven. You with it? You've got mass here. Yeah, you do. I don't you got even it? know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, nobody else does Can either. I win by default? Can you? Yes, yeah, yeah pretty well. You may, you may. Now, Stephen May, Yeah. all right? So he is number one, mm. but we're using him as the first score, as in a, a goal. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, yeah, you with yeah, me now? Yeah, yeah. So here comes your first one. Let's see how you go here. Brody Grundy, Stephen May. Buzz. What's the oh. score? Who's the player? 37. Yes. K K Channel. Channel. It's perfect. Well done. So there you go. First points to you, Mayor. Perfect. Now you you got, the, got the hang of it? Yeah, are we, using, are we using buzzers or are we just jumping in? You're just jumping in. Yeah, okay. Just jumping in, whoever's first. Um, Jake Lever, Jacob Van Vroon. Ben Lever. Brown. Spot on. There you go. All right, Taylor, one point each. Christian Salem, Christian Petrarca. Uh, was that 23? James Jordan. Yes, perfect. Well done. Very good. See, this is going along all right. It's not as silly as it sounds. All right, here's your next one. James Harms, Jack Viney. Bailey Fridge. Spot on. 31. That's exactly right. He's, he's, he's actually getting it right and he's still puzzled. I love it. You're doing really well, I'm mate. I'm trying to work out what, what number my teammates are. That's the puzzling part. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. All right, here we go. Here's your next one. Christian Petrarca, Lockie Hunter. Daniel Turner. Well done. All right. 42. Beautiful. What's the score over there? Taylor, three versus two. All right. Here we go. Lift your game. Come on, son. Um, Stephen, Stephen May, Max Gorn. 12. Lockie Hunter. Jake Bowie. Jake Bowie. Well done. Very good. All right. Here's your last one. What's the score? Four versus two. Yeah, okay. Um, here's your last one. Jacob Van Royen, Jake Melksham. Alex Nilborn. Oh, he's done it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Next, next time you play that, I don't reckon hold the paper up in front of my phone. How's <laughs> that? <laughs> it? That's bloody well good. Played. That's really good. <laughs> and he's reading it, reading it backwards as well. Well done. He, he deserves to win. That was bloody awesome. Sensational. Well done, guys. That was so good. That was so good. Um, girls, thank you for doing that. I just needed you to come up here, help us do that. There's a football for each of you. I just need to let you know, next week coming up on July the 12th, we're uh, back at the Mulgrave Country Club for an Essendon show with Kyle Langford and Peter Wright. 
And then on July the 19th, we are heading to the Italian Sports Club in Werribee for a Geelong show with Mitch Duncan and Gary Rowan. And I'll say hello to them for you, mate. Um, remember when you're purchasing tickets, only purchase your tickets through the That's Good Footy website, www.thatsgoodfooty.com.au forward slash events. Click on the links in the That's Good Footy post. This will take you through to the ticketing platform. This is the only place where you can purchase your tickets. Thanks to everyone for attending tonight. As I said, first time on a Thursday night, first time here at the Springvale RSL. Um, great attendance. You guys have been absolutely fabulous. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say thanks to Rob. Uh, he's filled in. Um, Sam was here for most of the night, but Rob has also been here. So Rob and Sam, who did the sound engineering. Thank you, boys. Really appreciate it. And while you're doing that, just thank the lovely Sandy. She's beautiful. She does the door, she does the floor, and she does a whole lot more. She's wonderful. Uh, well done, Sandy. Thank you very much for um, everything you, you've contributed uh, again tonight. And the last thing that I need to do is just to thank Jack Viney and Jacob Van Royen. There you go. I make some noise. <laughs> feels in some way, some way, shape or form that you're at the G right now, you know, it's got that kind of vibe about it. Um, but that was wonderful. Thank you very much. Boys, pick up your microphones. First time on the show, Jacob. How'd you go? Did you enjoy it? Would we ever see you back here again? I think you will. No, it was good fun. I was... Good. Started off a little bit nervous, but I think once... <laughs> you were fine, mate. Yeah, once we got into it, I was once you having me, a bit of fun. Once you, me, Stephen May and Jake Lever had a chat and just said, be yourself, you were yourself. So yeah, you were exactly. fine. Well done. Jack, thanks, thank you for coming back. No, really wonderful to have you here. Thanks for being so candid tonight. It was beautiful. Um, could we get you back again, do you think? Absolutely. No, thanks everyone for coming tonight. It was uh, made for a good night. I had lots of fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you again to all of you. You've been wonderful, every single one of you. We really appreciate your support. My name's Damien. This has been the That's Good for Footy panel show. We'll see you again real soon. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Cheers, guys. Woo!